Now our China Affairs Analyst Jason Ma will show us a unique aircraft. Its official name is Rotorcraft, nicknamed the Aerial Tricycle. But today, the U.S. Rotorcraft isn't the one in the spotlight. Instead, we'll take a look at a piece of advanced equipment made only for China's special forces. When I first saw the report saying that the CCP Special Forces had been heavily equipped with this aerial tricycle, I thought some netizens were spoofing the CCP. Later, I did some research online and found that it was actually true. And what surprised me even more was that in 2019, during the CCP's military parade, this aerial tricycle, an advanced kind of Special Forces equipment, actually appeared. It was displayed in the military parade to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the founding of China's communist regime. Chinese state-run media claim that it has great military value, saying it has short takeoff and landing distances, can fly at low speeds and low altitudes, is easy to drive, cheap and easy to conceal. However, when I read relevant materials, I could not help but feel that I was reading grotesque novels or black humor. In order for me to read it seriously, I had to remind myself again and again that this should be in fact a world-leading device from the CCP and this is serious and that I must study carefully. It can carry disposable multi-purpose rocket launchers, one of which was even equipped with missiles. Later, those models were dropped. In this open space like a convertible car, I am really worried that the missile launch will injure the passengers. The CCP initially planned to use this aerial tricycle to launch paratroopers, but the experiment found that with a strong air current, paratroopers were easily injured by the rear propellers. In addition, there are only a few passengers and a low passenger capacity, so they had to give up the idea of using it with paratroopers. An article praising the device suggests that it will show great power when the CCP attacks Taiwan. The logic is very simple. This judgment is made based on distance alone. The article claims that this kind of aerial tricycle can fly up to 370 miles. The Taiwan Strait is only 120 to 200 miles away. The article says it can take off from coastal bases, cross the strait, and open up a kind of through train across the strait. And once it is realized, it will definitely become a classic special operation and go down in history. The development personnel of this device may have all complied that the enemy's weapons and combat effectiveness are about the same level as people in China, whose houses are demolished by authorities. They can only throw stones, burning bottles, and the like. Whenever the opponent has a decent weapon, soldiers riding this aerial tricycle become the opponent's living targets due to its low speed, especially when it descends. An article said that the improved flight equipment can reach 370 miles due to the aero engine Bombardi's Rotax. I checked and found that this is an Austrian company, BRP Rotax. China's military industry is proud of this airplane and showed it off during the military parade, saying it's the world's leading model, but its core components are still from another country. The CCP's media said that the regime's special forces really like it. I fully believe and understand this. If I have a gun at home and my family allows me to buy it and to shoot the tree in my backyard, I will be very happy to play and enjoy that gun. But one day, if you force me to take this gun to the battlefield and fight against the opponent's machine gun, I will hate this gun and you. The Chinese regime is using its new national security law over Hong Kong to bring the city under Beijing's control. Some now wonder whether Taiwan will be next. And if the CCP was to use military force to do it, would the U.S. intervene and stand with the region? NTD's Chinese language side spoke with two China affairs experts to find out. The CCP has taken a hard stance toward the U.S. over affairs in the South China Sea and Taiwan. But recently, they've softened their stance and have appealed to the U.S. for dialogue. According to newspaper The South China Morning Post, Beijing didn't want the situation to escalate and ordered Chinese army to absolutely not open fire first. While on Chinese social media, China's 50 Cent Army and Little Pinks, the country's internet propaganda trolls and sympathizers, have remained unusually quiet for weeks. That's in contrast to their usual attitude, a sense of military supremacism over the U.S. and of fearlessness in the face of war. 
Former Lieutenant Colonel of the Chinese Army Naval Command, Yao Cheng, said, It's because the CCP knows its military forces lie far behind that of the U.S. Now the political, diplomatic and military cooperation between the United States and Taiwan is very close. The CCP has seen it now and is afraid, because the military strength of China and the United States is not at the same level at all. The United States has a missile defense system, but China does not have this system. If its ships fight the United States at sea, they will be very obvious targets. NTD's China affairs analyst Tang Jingyuan pointed out the contract between the U.S.'s hardline and the CCP's increasingly low stance. In the last two years, the CCP was very overbearing in the South China Sea, and the United States avoided confrontation. At that time, the United States was criticized and Trump was criticized. But recently, Pompeo issued a statement on the South China Sea. This is very important. This was the turning point. Since then, the attitude of the U.S. military has changed in the opposite way. The United States shows a very strong presence in the South China Sea. The military exercises and reconnaissance has advanced to places very close to the coastline of South and East China. In the past, the CCP could not tolerate it at all. You can see that the United States has completely changed from passive to active, and the CCP is in turn very low-key in dealing with these things. Tang said the U.S. seems to be preparing for a fight, so the regime is backing down. We have seen an interesting phenomenon. Recently, the U.S. military has been close to the coastline of Guangdong province and even Shanghai for 12 days in a row. The closest distance is less than 60 miles from the coastline. But the CCP did not react strongly. I think this shows one point. The CCP is very clear about two things. First, the attitude of the Americans has changed. The CCP wanted to blackmail in the past, but now they know that blackmail would be unsuccessful. Second, the CCP knows very well how far it is from the United States in terms of naval and air strength. They dare not enter a real war. Once the United States shows that they are not afraid to fight with the CCP, when the U.S. really has the intention of seeking war, the CCP will know that it has to back down. Chinese fighter jets have often flown across the unofficial line that divides the Taiwan Strait into Chinese and Taiwanese zones, or flew around the island as a show of force to threaten Taiwan. Taiwan is now in discussions with the U.S. on acquiring underwater sea mines and cruise missiles. The island is receiving U.S. support in areas like politics, arms sales, and economic cooperation. U.S. Health Minister Alex Azar's recent visit to Taiwan was also an important symbol of support. This move broke the tacit agreement between China and the United States in the past. Since the establishment of diplomatic relations between these two countries, there has been a tacit agreement that the United States will not develop official relations with Taiwan, but only maintain unofficial relations with it. Azar's visit to Taiwan has broken this tacit understanding. Tang said the stance of international society towards Hong Kong is very important for the island's safety and that the tense situation inside China is also playing a role. If the CCP had really gotten hold of Hong Kong without being punished by the international community, then the CCP may feel that they have succeeded once, and they may want to do it a second time. But under the current circumstances, Hong Kong has not yet been settled. At the same time, the CCP is facing conflicts inside China, floods, etc., and various conflicts inside the party and also multiple sanctions imposed by the United States, the rapid deterioration of Sino-U.S. relations, all this will lead to the result that the CCP must consider the risks. If they were to send troops into Taiwan now, they would very likely risk a direct war with the U.S. They would not be fighting Taiwan, but actually fighting the U.S., even including some U.S. allies. Yao Cheng offered a reminder to Western countries not to be deceived by the Chinese regime. Don't be fooled by the current performance of the CCP. They are waiting. They are waiting until the election is over. Therefore, what they are doing in the South China Sea is a protracted war. They believe that the United States will not stay long in that area because it is far away from the U.S. mainland to the South China Sea and that it will cost too much money and manpower. The CCP always has this point of view. Don't think that the CCP has surrendered. That's not the case. The CCP is very cunning. So I think the United States and other Western countries should not be deceived by the CCP.
西方社会以后，不要被中共这种迷惑了。And that's all for today's China in Focus. Thanks for watching, and see you tomorrow.